Hello, hello, hello. Happy Friday, Strath on Pet Talk. I am Sarah of Expat in Croatia, and this is Five Question Friday. Every Friday at five o'clock Croatia time, answer five questions from people who have sent them in on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, expatandcroatia.com, email, my consulting sessions, Cam's consulting sessions, and people who write them in the snow because it's snowing today, and I love snow. As a Southern girl, not just Croatian Southern girl, but American South Southern girl. I have not seen a lot of snow in my lifetime, so I get very, very excited whenever it snows. And it is snowing where I am today, and that is, I love that. I absolutely love the winter wonderland. I mean, I know it's not gonna stick for long, and tomorrow it's gonna be sun, sunny and warm, and it will all be gone, but for this moment, I really love it. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, hey, Rob. Hello from Snow Snowy NYC. So glad that you're here. So, uh, okay, what's going on? Um, first, I just wanna say, um, I sometimes when I'm traveling, I don't quite know where I'm going to film Five Question Friday from until like 30 minutes before I film Five Question Friday, sometimes even 10 minutes before. And this is one of those cases. I was having lunch with a new friend who I just met a couple of days ago and I really did not know what was gonna happen. And then he was like, hey, why don't we go to my friend's art studio, which is right around the corner and see if you can do it there. And that's where I am now. So I'm in an art studio upstairs. And this artist, he has a studio and it's all his art. It's not a collection of other people's art, it's his art. And he does all different kinds of mixed medium. So there's you know acrylic and paintings, but also there's um, sculpture uh, that has been like welded together from pieces of metal. There's stuff made out of um, uh, paper, all kinds of stuff. So you can kind of see I'm up in like a spare room upstairs. So there's stuff up here on the wall. So I'm really grateful to be able to to film from here today. Uh, oh yeah, so I've been in hiding all week working on my book that I'm starting, which I do not know when I will finish it. I have no idea how long it'll take. Maybe it'll take 10 years, maybe it'll take two. I have no idea but I've been cat sitting for my friends all week and it was a perfect opportunity for me to start working on this project. And my goal for this project or for this week was to do an outline. That was my goal that felt reasonable and achievable and I achieved that on Monday and then I started writing. So I've actually gotten down about 4,000 words, which is pretty good. So I'm really pleased this was a success. And so now I've stopped uh, and I'm spending the last couple of days that I have here just to kind of enjoy my time. And so I have just had a beautiful, beautiful meal and tomorrow I'm going to go hiking and I'm really excited about that. So I'm going to head back to Split on Sunday. Uh, hi from Snowy Morning in the Mid-Hudson River Valley, New York. Awesome, welcome, so glad you're here. What else do I have to tell you? I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and dive into the questions. We've got some great ones today. Uh, I don't always say that, but I always mean it. Okay, so first question comes from Joseph on the Five Question Friday forum. My wife is a Croatian citizen based on descent. Uh, I'm her husband. I want to get my citizenship uh, based on family reunification. We are both older, retired, and God forbid if my wife passes away, would I lose my citizenship uh, with her passing? This is a really important question because, you know, I've gotten it before. We haven't talked about it here on Five Question Friday before, but this is a question we've gotten and I understand your concern. So the answer is no. Once you have citizenship, it's not going to be taken away from you if your spouse dies. So you don't have to worry about that. There are very, very, very rare cases where your citizenship can be taken away once you actually have obtained it. You got to do something real wrong. So don't worry about that. You have citizenship now. There's more to unpack from this because it's not just a simple no. I want you to understand the full picture here, okay? So if you have not applied for citizenship yet and your spouse dies, you no longer qualify to apply based on your spouse being a descendant or based on your spouse being a Croatia and you living in Croatia long enough. So if your spouse is no longer living, you lose that opportunity. So it's important that if you qualify to apply for citizenship, whether it's based on descent because of one of your ancestors, or it's because you're married to someone who's um, a descendant or you're married to a Croatian, 
apply now. Do not wait because you just never know if the laws are going to change or your spouse is going to die and you're going to lose that opportunity. So I really want to make sure that I emphasize that because I've talked to a few people. Um, one woman, she was married to a Croatian for 30 years and she never applied for citizenship and then her spouse died and she lost that opportunity to apply for citizenship and that's 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 something that you can't get back. So that's important to understand. Now, I want to take this one step further. Uh, let's let's like set citizenship aside. Let's talk about res residence. So let's say that you have residence based on family reunification with a Croatian citizen, and what, let's say they, that they die. What happens then? Well, if you have temporary residence and you have been married, or if you've been in Croatia for less than three years, then you lose your residence. You no longer have a basis to stay in Croatia. But if you have had residence for more than three years, then you can apply for what's called autonomous stay. Um, if any of you have ever applied for residence before, on that temporary residence form at the very top, it has like three different check boxes, like one is like a new application, one is an extension, and one says autonomous stay. This is what that means. So if you've had residence for more than three years and your spouse dies and your spouse was your basis for residence, then you can get autonomous stay, which essentially means you can reapply for residence uh, under the same conditions and kind of preserve those rights. And that's actually how I'm here today. Hey, Kathy! Uh, I had autonomous stay because another thing that autonomous stay can be used for is when you get a divorce. So I got a divorce. I've been here for about two and a half years. So actually technically I didn't qualify for autonomous stay, which is why the split police, like they assembled a committee and they voted on me <laughs> to decide whether or not they were going to allow me to apply for autonomous stay, even though I didn't qualify. And thankfully they said, yes, we're going to allow her to apply for autonomous stay. So I was able to reapply for residence based on that condition in the law and under and I was able to preserve my rights and that's how I was able to open up a business in Croatia as a third country national without having to hire three full-time Croatians. So I kind of slipped through the cracks there uh, due to the largesse of split mup. Uh, so that's about autonomous stay. So if you are a spouse of a Croatian citizen, regardless of whether your spouse is a native Croatian or they are a um, descendant, and you want to know how what your options are for applying for citizenship, you have two paths. One's based on residence and one base is based on descent. So we have a guide specifically for spouses. If you would like that citizenship guide, send us a DM and Cam will shoot that over to you. Uh, yeah, and I just want to re-encourage you, if you qualify for citizenship now, apply now because you never know what's going to happen, what's going to change later. And you can't get mad at Croatia if you wait too long, okay? All right, so next question, this comes from William, also through the Five Question Friday form, which you can access through our newsletter. So usually these are newsletter subscribers who fill out this form. So many of Croatia's inner city streets are not accessible to vehicles. True that. Uh, what is the best way to move furniture and household goods from overseas to a small house on a steep and narrow street in a small village in Croatia? So specifically, he put Orovic, which is a small village on Pelešac Peninsula, which is in the southern part of Croatia. Uh, he said there is automobile road access about 30 or 40 meters down the street from our house. Okay, so there's a couple different things that you could do here. Now, the best way to move belongings is to hire a company that's going to move your stuff door to door. Now, not all companies will do that, but we do know one that will. And if you need a recommendation, we are more than happy to connect you with them. So just send us a DM. They can bring furniture and boxes as close as possible with small vans, or they can use these trolleys, like kind of, and in some places they may use donkeys. And I do want to mention this. So this company that I'm referencing, so they do relocations all over the world, but they are based in Dalmatia. And the owner of this company is in my Foreign Business Owners Association in, in Split. And he was doing a presentation on different kinds of moves and kind of the nuances associated with international moving. And he was showing us some pictures and they did actually do a move on donkeys in Morocco. <laughs> so he showed a picture of all these donkeys with like all of these people's belongings kind of draped over them. So that using donkeys is not an unusual thing to happen in Croatia. So that could happen. The other way you could do it is just get a gaggle of friends together and be like, look, I'll make you a big, nice meal, 
to have Bun Charakia and, and be at the end of this adventure, you know, can you just help me out? And that's another way to do it. So, uh, we, like I said, if you would like to be connected with that moving company, shoot us a DM. And if you're interested in the Foreign Business Owners Association of Swift Dalmatia, uh, we can also hook you up with that. We have monthly meetings twice a month. So one is the first Thursday of the month. That's kind of like an informal chat where we talk about our businesses. And then the third Thursday. So we just had one yesterday. I'm really sad that I missed that. And that's where we have more of an educational presentation. So yesterday there was a restaurant round, ta round table uh, that the president, Jeff Bratton, who owns Fig Restaurants in Split on, and on Hoar, he was moderating that. And there are a bunch of other restaurant tours from Split who are all kind of talking about um, different things that they go through in running restaurants in, in Split Dalmatia. So uh, if you're interested in that, we can shoot you over the URL. All right, next. Uh, oh, I think actually I saw a question up here, so I want to make sure I do not miss that from Vanessi. I really need help for the driver's license. Uh, okay, well, there's a couple things to know there. You can either start from scratch, in which case you have to go to Autoschola, so driving school, or if you already have a license from a foreign country, then you can exchange that. Now, exchanging is the easier path. So if you can do that, that is the best thing to do. Exchanging my driver's license, I had a Texas driver's license for Croatia, which was like the easiest thing I've ever done in Croatia. It was super, super easy. So we have a guide on both. On Auto, well, we have guides on lots of things. Auto Schola, we have a guide. We have a guide on how to get your driver's license from scratch. It really kind of goes over all of the exams and everything that is involved in that. Although all of that's done in Croatian, so if you need to do it from scratch just, and you're not a Croatian speaker, it's important for you to understand that you would have an additional cost of hiring like a, like a court interpreter to do the translations for you. Or you can exchange your driver's license. We have a guide on that as well. And then we also have a guide on like driver's license categories because sometimes people are like, oh, well, I have this special driver's license in my home country. Am I able to transfer those categories? So we have something based on that as well. Uh, so if you want any of those, send us a DM. But exchanging your license is super easy. You need to have a medical certificate, which is pretty easy to get. It really only takes about half an hour. They check your eyesight. They give you a psychological test, which I know sounds a little bit scary, but it's not that big a deal. It's usually a combination of two things. So one, they have you look at a series of different shapes and you have to pick out which one doesn't belong in the group. And then they give you um, a list of questions about how you're feeling. <laughs> Like, have you been depressed in the last 30 days or something like that? Uh, but it's pretty easy to pass that. Uh, I've never heard of anyone failing it. My guess is someone has, but I really don't know exactly what, the, what it is that they're looking for there. But I've known some people who, who are deeply troubled and they've been passed it, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and that's, that's really it. And then you have to give them your license. Now, they're going to take your license and they send it back to your country. And... For a long time, I was like, okay, are they really like gonna send my license back to Texas? No, that's not what they do. They send it to your closest embassy. So they sent my Texas driver's license back to the US embassy in Zagreb, and then the US embassy called me on my phone and said, hey, we have your driver's license. Do you like it back? And I was like, yes, I would. And they mailed it to me. So it really just depends on how nice your embassy is. Now, I was registered with the Department of State to let them know that like, hey, I live abroad, I'm in Croatia. So that way I can get access to services and stuff like that. It's going to work differently in every country, but usually most countries have some method for their citizens to register that they are abroad so that they know they're there. And I always encourage people to do that. If you are going to be living outside of your home country for an extended period of time, even if you're going on a trip for a long period of time, you should really notify your country that you have left just in case, you know, shit hits the fan, which these days entirely possible. Uh, okay, so next question comes from Judith. This came in also on our five question Friday forum. I've had random jobs in Croatia over different periods. How can I check my current body stage? So excellent question. Never gotten this before. Now, before we go any further, I want to make sure that I explain what body stage is in case you don't know. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of my tea first. <sighs> okay. So, Rodney Stage refers to your length of service. 
Um, so this refers to the amount of time you've been employed in Croatia during which employers paid into the pension funds on your behalf, okay? There are three types of pension funds. Two are mandatory, and then the third is private and optional. But if you are employed by a company, then they are required to contribute to the two pension funds on your behalf. If you've been working for, I don't know, a few decades, then you may have, there was a time where there was only one pension fund, but now there are two, okay? So it does not refer to part-time, or it does not differentiate between part-time and full-time employment. It is calculated based on the number of years paid into the system. So even you, if you only worked one hour per day within a calendar year, it is calculated as one year of stage or service. The absolute minimum Rodney stage you must have to retire is 15 years, unless you're a disabled person, in which case there are other rules and requirements that apply to you. So these years of service are used to use as a qualification for withdrawing your pension. So now that we have put out the, or set, set this, the foundation of what Rodney Stage is, now I can tell you how you can check your Rodney Stage, okay? So this is very easy to do by going online and checking the A Garajani system. So A Garajani is a e-citizens. It's, it's a government services platform online that allows you to access a plethora of services. It only gets better year after year. They only improve what is accessible there. So for example, you can get your creation background check there in like five minutes. You can get access to your land registry certificate if you own a home in like five minutes. Like it's, it's great. There's a lot of stuff there. If the government's ever going to communicate with you, there's an inbox there where you can read those things. So pretty much anybody who has an OIB can access the a garageny system. You do not have to be a citizen. You do not even have to be a resident because there are people who own property in Croatia and they're not residents and they're able to access it. Now there are different levels of access. Croatian citizens have the highest level of access and the way that you access it can vary. So, uh, Croatian citizens, they are able to get the highest level of access using their Osobna Iskaznica, which is their national ID card. Um, but the other ways to access it, like I do it using my bank, like Ersta. And before I had Ersta, I used Pebese, so I was able to use that. So there are keys that are generated through your bank. You can also do it through your phone. I think T-Mobile uh, also has, or Taycom has a way to do it. So there's a variety of ways. Now we have a guide that goes over everything related to Agarajani and all the different methods you can use to log in. So if you want that, send us a DM. That, that guide alone took us like 40 hours. It was bonkers how difficult it was for us to put together that guide. So it's pretty extensive. Uh, okay, now let me get into Rodney Stash. I'm gonna literally kind of list off the instructions, but if you would like these instructions, send us a DM and we'll send them over to you. So you go to Agarajani and you log in and you're gonna look for the catalog, Catalog Usluga, which is Catalog of Services. You choose a service called Rod, which Rod means work. Then you click on the electronic employment status record. I am going to say this in creation for your entertainment. Okay. Uh, Elektronički zapis o radno pravnom statusu. Okay. It will take you to the Haze MO where you have to log in. Haze MO is a government uh, agency that manages pension. So Haze MO is health insurance. Haze MO is pension. Once you are in, you will see the window where you can enter your email address and they will email you the electronic employment status record. So we have also a guide on Croatia's pension system if you want to understand how that works and how old you have to be to withdraw, how many uh, years of service you need to have, and kind of all the different intricacies of that, including the three types of pension. Uh, that's all included in this guide. So if you like that, send us a DM, we'll send that over to you. Okay, next, this comes from Marina on the Five Question Friday form. What is the law regarding squatters? Oh, super excited to answer this question. Thank you to uh, our newest colleague, Daniela, who did the research for this. So, uh, first of all, um, I was talking with my lunch companion today uh, about what I was going to talk about on today's Five Question Friday, and I said, squatters, right? And he was like, what's a squatter? So in case you do not know what a squatter is, a squatter is a person who goes onto a property that they have no right to be on and then just stays there. So like maybe there's an abandoned property 
and no one's been there in a really long time and someone just moves in there and starts living there. That's essentially what a squatter is. And uh, I lived in the Netherlands for a year and I thought it was so interesting because in the Netherlands, squatting is such a problem because squatters have such strong rights that they actually have what's called anti-squatters. So anti-squatters are people that you pay to go and live in your property to make sure that no one comes and squats in it. So this, um, like it, it, let's say that you're a company and you're renovating your offices and no one's in there, you could pay an anti-squatter to go and like live in your corporate office while it's being renovated so that no one goes in there. Or the same goes for, let's say, you've moved out of your apartment for three months or something, you're somewhere else, I don't know, um, taking extended holiday, you could pay an anti-squatter to go and live in your house to make sure the squatter doesn't show up. Isn't that bonkers? Okay, that's what squatting is. So squatting is criminalized by articles 20 through 27 of the Creation Ownership and Other Prop Proprietary Rights Act. If you have squatters on your property, you can file a lawsuit and you can have the right to emergency procedures by the court. You also have a right to protect your property, which means that you have the right to remove the settlers, but basically if they don't want to leave, you have to wait for a court decision, okay? Croatia is all about procedure. All right, that is why one of the biggest reasons why the legal system takes so long is because there's there are procedures that have to happen and those things take time to move through the system. So it's very hard to get for things to happen quickly. Okay? And unfortunately, people who really know how to work that system can use that system to draw things out. Uh, that can happen a lot in like custody cases and property cases. All right. However, it's very important to react as soon as you find out that someone is on your property because you have between 30 days and one year to go to court. If you don't, then the court can side with the squatter. So there is definitely a statute of limitations here. If squatters have organized a community and they have proof that it is socially useful after a year, they might be able to stay in a space. Since court cases can take longer, squatters can sometimes win. Now, there is a squatter situation in Split that blew my mind. For anyone who knows Split, there is a beach, uh, Plaza Terstenic, so it's near the hospital. There used to be a bar there called Cox Bar. Forget what it was before it was Cox. It's been like, I don't know, a bunch of different things since I've lived there. But I walked by it, I don't know, six, seven months ago, something like that, and I noticed that all the windows were either boarded up or like there were tents inside. And I saw a sign that this group, this community of people had taken over this cafe bar and now they live inside there. Now it's been going on for quite a long time. I'd never even heard about this. So then, you know, I talked to a friend about it and we did some digging and we saw an article in Slobona Dalmatia about it. And they, they're this organized group that says that they don't recognize creation law, especially when it comes to parking tickets, which I think is very specific. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's like a thing. So it sounds like squatters rights are not quite as strong as they are in the Netherlands, but the fact that you only have between 30 days and one year should really let, like, let that sink in because I know a huge amount of our audience are Croatian diaspora. And, you know, there are lots of Croatian diaspora that have rights to, that own properties in Croatia and don't even know that they own property in Croatia because maybe their grandparent or their great grandparent or their great, great, great grandparent left Croatia generations ago and abandoned property here and their descendants don't even know that they have property here and so you could not just have squatters but even people who know that the property has abandoned who are then using the creation legal system to be able to um, take ownership of this property so if you think that your family has property you know we can certainly connect you to a lawyer to help you figure it out because it can be taken away from you. It's it's important it's by people who don't necessarily have rights to it. So it's it's important to understand that that is a risk, you know. And let's say that you do come and visit your property, but not very often. Like you, it's important to know that th these are risks. So make sure that you have someone who's coming and checking in on the property if you're gone for more than three four months at a time. 
I can't say that this problem is rampant because Croatia is a very safe country and for the most part people respect other people's property, but you know, there are outliers in any place. Uh, Kathy, Kathy, love Kathy. Did I read that the judges are going on strike again? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So last year, the judges were on strike for two and a half months. That caused a lot of havoc at the Ministry of Justice and in the court system and delayed a lot of stuff. And now they're going on strike again. So it's a planned strike. I don't have the dates off the top of my head. I know we put them on stories yesterday. So it's a planned strike for about two weeks, 10 days, something like that. But that could always be extended. Now, what does that actually mean? So when the courts went on strike last year, nothing happened. Like everything came to a halt. All litigation came to a halt. Um, all property purchase came to a halt because the land registry, which to be considered the owner of a property, your name has to be added to the land registry. But the land registry falls under the Ministry of Justice. So if the Ministry of Justice is on strike, then nobody can be added to the land registry. You also can't make changes to the land registry, like nothing. So that can be put on hold. I mean, I actually, I got a buddy of mine and he's been waiting more than a year to have his name added to the land registry, which is very concerning, very, very concerning. I'm actually in, in a court proceeding, which I, my lawyer has said I, I cannot talk about publicly. <laughs> so I'm not going to go into the details. But, you know, I've been waiting for a hearing for mm, two years almost, I think, maybe. I mean, I'm not in a rush. It'll happen whatever it happens. But, um, but that's important to know. So if you have anything related to property or anything related to litigation or anything that has to do with the court, during strike, nothing's happening. Completely frozen. Yeah, Rob, I know. Police. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. We'll see if it gets extended. We're definitely going to keep you updated on stories, but we most usually put most of the detail in our Tuesday newsletter. So if you're not subscribed to that yet, I would suggest subscribing. We usually go into a lot more detail there. So if you are not subscribed yet, there is a link in our bio where you can get the link to subscribe or just send us a DM and Cam will shoot that over to you. Okay, uh, squatters, if you would like the link to the law on that, we have that. And also if you need a lawyer because you've got a squatter issue or a property issue or anything, we of course can connect you to our, our vetted network. Uh, Kathy, does it affect the Department of the Interior or citizenship? No. It should not have an impact on those things because that's a different ministry. I'm trying to like scroll through my head to think if there's anything that would impact that. No, shouldn't. It didn't the last time. So no, there should not be any impact there. But I will say this, MOP is having its own delays. Okay. We talked about this on last week's episode. There have been a lot of delays with residence applications. We're clearly seeing delays in citizenship processing. So MOP has its own complications. Okay, is this our last question? Yes, it is. Okay, so this comes from Irina here on Instagram. I was thinking about creation history and I'd like to ask if you have a book list in English that foreigners should read to understand this beautiful country, it might be really helpful. Thank you in advance. Great question. So last year we worked with this beautiful woman named Gabby over at the Split uh, Public Library to create a list of uh, books about creation history that are in English. Now, I have to be upfront with you, most of the best books on creation history are not in English, but there are some that are good, good uh, accounts of creation history that are in English. So she put this list together and, and worked with uh, uh, Maria uh, on on this list, so we're happy to send that over to you. What is there something else I wanted to say? No, I think that's it. Uh, so yeah, if you want that, send us over. And you know that actually reminds me of something I should have said last Friday, and I did not say it. And I'm gonna say it now. Uh, this is a perfect time. So Maria Kalitz, um, she is the first person who joined Expat in Croatia four and a half years ago, and it was just me and her for two years, I think, and in this coming June, it's going to be her five-year anniversary with Expat in Croatia, and her and I have kind of been working towards this goal of um, her becoming editor-in-chief, and she was just 
promoted to editor in chief and I'm just I'm so proud, I'm so impressed, I'm so lucky and grateful to be able to work with her every day. But she has been handling all of the content on the site for a long time. She manages our newsletter and now she's managing a team of writers and researchers and journalists who contribute to Expat and Croatia every month. And I want to show her some love. So Maria Tkalitz is our new editor or new first and new editor-in-chief. So sending loads of love out to Nadia. Yeah, big congratulations to her. It just made so much sense and I just I'm so grateful and lucky to have found her and that the universe like plopped her in my path and I can't imagine doing expat and Croatia without her. So we all cherish Maria's existence. Uh, okay guys, that was, that's it. Those are all my questions. So if you have any questions that you would like to see answered on Five Question Friday, shoot them over. Drop them in the comments, send us a DM, uh, use a carrier pigeon, paper airplane. We accept all kinds. So next week I'll be back in Split. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think I, I'm going to be somewhere else next Friday, <laughs> which is all, also a bit of a secret. I'm being very secretive lately. Um, yeah, actually, I will be on location next week as well. So I hope that I will see you next Friday for another edition of Five Question Friday. So in the meantime, I wish you a beautiful weekend. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Ciao, Rini Marseille.